In the previous few parts, we have discussed about lines of symmetries of a graph of y is equal to ax squared plus bx plus c, the quadratic graph. We have also discussed about maximum minimum points or the turning points of a quadratic graph. We can algebraically find that by doing some completing square processes. And we also look at the roots of a quadratic graph, which is the place where the graph cuts the x-axis. And from roots, we started discussing about a very important theory, which is the idea of discriminant. We make use of discriminant to analyze the nature of roots. And when we're talking about discriminants, specifically when b squared minus 4 ac, when the discriminant is less than zero, there's these two cases where we talk about always positive, always negative. Okay, I want to explore deeper into this. This can be tested in our syllabus. So let's take a look at this always positive, always negative scenario. And some students misunderstand this always positive, always negative as x being always positive or x being always negative, okay? This is wrong. When we are talking about a quadratic function to be always positive, I'm talking about the entire function to be always positive. I think the graph will give us a better idea of what is happening. So this graph here is a graph that fx is always positive. Because if I were to draw a graph that is like this, and this is y is equal to fx, where fx is ax squared plus bx plus c, and if this graph is hovering above the x-axis, what we can see is that regardless of the value of x, even if x is negative, all the y-coordinates are positive. And what is the y-coordinate representing? The y-coordinates are representing the values of fx, the entire fx, the entire expression. So what we are trying to look at now is for this entire expression or the y-coordinates of the graph to be always positive for all values of x, regardless of whether x is positive or negative, this graph is always positive, okay? So we are talking specifically about this scenario where y is always positive, okay? Please take note, our focus is that y is always positive. And we are talking about y, which is equal to fx, so fx is always positive. How can we algebraically discuss about this? Because from the graph, if you can really understand this, is it possible for us to use a bit of algebra to verify whether a quadratic expression is always positive? Yes, there are two ways that we can do that. First is to re-express this into its completed square form. Let me give you an example. A completed square form, let's say I managed to re-express fx as uh, a x minus h square plus k. If it is a form that is like this, why is it that from this form, we can then determine that fx is always positive. Let me give you a numerical example. Let's say a is uh, 3. Then let's say h here is, uh, I don't know, like 4. Then plus k, k, let's say it is 5. Can you see that algebraically, this expression is always positive? You know why? Because we can see that x minus 4 squared is bigger or equal to 0 all the time. Regardless of value of x, it is always going to be bigger or equal to 0. It will be equal to 0 when x is equal to 4. If x is equal to anything that is not 4, this entire expression here, because of the square, it is always going to be positive. Even if x is, let's say, minus 1. Minus 1 minus 4 is minus 5, square is positive 25. So it is always positive, which means that if I were to multiply this by 3, it is still going to be always positive. It is, sorry, not always positive. This is bigger or equal to 0, which means that when I multiply this by 3, it is still going to be bigger or equal to 0. And if I were to add 5 to it, if I were to add 5 to this, so this square plus 5, which means that on the right-hand side, I will also add a 5 to it. This tells me that this expression here is in fact always going to be bigger than 5, bigger or equal to 5. And what is bigger or equal to 5? 5 by itself is always bigger than 0. That is why this expression is always positive. So we can derive this from the completed square form, but there must be two conditions. I've stated them here. First is a must be bigger than 0. The other one is k must be bigger than 0. a is bigger than 0, for example, positive 3 k must be bigger than 0, for example, positive 5, which means if you have something that is like this, 3, then x minus 4 squared minus 5. If k is less than 0, then you are not supposed to be able to determine whether this expression is always positive or always negative. Because if you think about it, now we have, uh, according to what we have analyzed just now, right, x minus 4 squared here is bigger or equal to 0, which means that 3 
multiplying to it, it is still going to be bigger or equal to 0. But if I were to minus 5 to it, so it will be 3x minus 4 squared minus 5. So on the right-hand side, I will also minus 5, which means that this expression, which is fx, which means that fx is, a, an, is an expression that is bigger or equal to minus 5, which means that this can be, if it is bigger or equal to minus 5, it can be minus 2, it can be minus 1, it can be 0, it can be positive 5, it can be positive 7. So it can be both positive or 0 or negative. That's why we cannot determine whether, I mean, we are, we are not determined, we, this expression fx is just not always positive, okay, because it can sometimes be negative. That is why we need to make sure that this a must be positive after completing square, and this k must be positive in order for us to verify that a particular quadratic expression is always positive. This can also be applied to an always negative scenario. Let me show you how that can be done. So for an always negative scenario, I believe some of you probably can already imagine the always negative scenario, right? So for an always negative scenario, the graph will look more of like this. A set face, which is going to be always below the x-axis. So this, if y is equal to fx and fx is equal to ax squared plus bx plus c, this will be called a always negative scenario and similar to this it is because y is the one that is always negative it is always negative okay so how can we determine that we can still make use of completing square so if fx is successfully completed square and we express into a form that is like this the same two conditions that is applied to here can be changed and manipulated and refined a little bit to be applied here as long as a is less than 0. As long as k is less than 0, just now we were discussing for this to happen, right? K must be A must be bigger than 0 and k must be bigger than 0. I stated it here. These are the two conditions. Okay, so for this, A must be less than 0 and k must be less than 0. Then it will be a always negative scenario. Again, let me give you a numerical example. Let's say A is minus 5. Then x plus 4 square minus 7. Okay, this, if fx is equal to this, then I can tell that this is always negative. Why? Because, first of all, x plus 4 square is bigger or equal to 0 all the time. And if I were to multiply minus 5 to it, if I were to multiply minus 5 to this inequality, the inequality sign will swap. This is less than 0, less than or equal to 0. And if I were to then minus 7 to it, so minus 5, x minus 4 squared minus 7 is less than or equal to minus 7, okay? We do a minus 7 on both sides. Then we can see that this entire expression here, which is fx, is less than or equal to minus 7 all the time. So it is always going to be negative. That is why as long as a is negative and k is negative, for the completed square form, we can then say that this function is always negative. Similarly, if any one of them is not so, for example, if k is a positive number, okay, let's say this is positive 7, which means that if this is positive 7, yes, this is still true, yes, this is still true, and we're going to add 7 on both sides. So this is going to be less than 7. So can we then say that fx is always negative? No, we cannot. Because when this is less than or equal to 7, that means this, f, this fx can be less than or equal to 7, right? So it can be 7, it is positive. It can be 6, it is positive. It can also be minus 1, it is negative. It can be 0 or so, which means that suddenly it can be sometimes positive, sometimes 0, sometimes negative. It is not a always negative scenario. So if we were to use completing square, this is what we will do. But another very, very useful way that we can determine whether a quadratic function is always positive or always negative is actually through the usage of the idea of discriminant. How can we make use of discriminant to do that? Because according to what we have just discussed, the idea of discriminant can be made use of to determine whether the quadratic graph has roots or no real roots.
when will a quadratic graph has no real roots? It is when this graph is not going to be cutting the x-axis at all. It is not going to be cutting the line y is equal to 0 at all. Which means that to determine whether the graph is going to cut the line y is equal to 0, the common thing that we can do regardless of whether it is this scenario or this scenario is that b squared minus 4ac is less than 0. So if I were to equate this to 0 plus bx plus c is equal to 0 and we check and we realize that the discriminant is less than 0, then the graph is not going to cut the x-axis. And some students find this pretty confusing because they thought that this is going to be applied for b squared minus 4ac is less than 0. It's only going to be applied for this because less than 0, it seems like it's talking about negative, right? So it seems like when b squared minus 4ac is less than 0, then it is talking about an always negative scenario. This is incorrect. You know why this is incorrect? Because b squared minus 4ac is not trying to talk about whether fx is positive or negative. b squared minus 4ac is trying to indicate to us that fx has no intersection with the x-axis. So for these two cases, the moment when b squared minus 4ac is less than 0, the smiley face can be hovering above the x-axis, the sad face can be hovering below the x-axis. Which means that this implies this. This also can imply this. So b squared minus 4ac can be applied for both scenarios. That was what we discussed in the previous part, right? So when there were no, no real roots, when b squared minus 4ac is less than 0, it can be either this case or this case. So how do we determine whether it is the first case or the second case? Because if it is the first case, then we are talking about a case where it is always positive. If it is the second case, then it is always negative. So if, both, if this is applied to both scenarios, we need one more condition to determine whether it is this or to determine whether it is this. So the other condition is where a is bigger than 0, obviously. That means we need it to be a smiley face. And the discriminant must be bigger than 0, it must be less than 0, in order for us to say that a quadratic function is always positive. So we need two conditions, number 1 and number 2. a must be bigger than 0, and the discriminant must be less than 0. Then this will happen. Please take note, okay? I want to remind you again, a lot of students think that when discriminant is less than zero, it is referring only to this, but it is not. When this happened and this happened, then this will happen. It is an always positive scenario. And when A is less than zero and discriminant is less than zero, then we have a always negative scenario. A is less than zero tells me that it is a set phase. And then when the discriminant is less than zero, it tells me that this set phase parabola is going to be below the x-axis all the time, so the y-coordinates will always be negative. Similarly for this, a is bigger than 0, we have a smiley face, and since the discriminant is less than 0, this smiley face will not be intersecting x-axis, that is why the y-coordinate of this is always going to be positive. And what some students also find confusing is, they will think that, what if, what if we have a scenario that is like this? Is this scenario a always negative scenario. No, it is not. You know why? Because we don't draw the parabola in this way. If this were to be the x-axis, we don't really stop here, right? This will actually continue. This part will also actually just continue. So for those students who just draw the bottom part, yes, visually it seems like it is a negative scenario, but in fact, the two ends here are supposed to be extended, so the y-coordinates are sometimes negative, sometimes positive. Similarly, for those students who try to sketch a graph, in the set phase, as a set phase, but they purposely put it to be above the x-axis. But then for this graph, it can also be extended down, it can also be extended down to complete the parabola. So the y-coordinates will be sometimes positive, sometimes zero, sometimes negative. So these are not the cases where it is always positive or always negative. Always positive scenario must be like this. Always negative scenario must be like this. Let me show you a question where the idea of always positive and always negative can be tested. So let's take a look at this, question number three. In this question here, we are told that we are supposed to find the range of values of a, and a is part of the coefficient of the expression that is given to us, such that this expression is positive for all values of x. When we say that this is positive for all values of x, it is trying to say that this quadratic expression is always 
positive. So we know that if we were to imagine the graph of this, the graph of this y is equal to ax squared plus 5x plus a is going to be a graph that is like this and hovering above the x-axis according to what we have discussed. So let's try to talk about this algebraically so that we can find the range of values for a. First of all, we need this to be a smiley face. An always positive scenario, scenario has to be a smiley face parabola. So the first thing that is necessary is a must be a positive number. The coefficient of x squared must be positive. And the second condition, according to what we have discussed, is that the discriminant must be less than zero. So we're going to let the discriminant be less than zero. And just a quick recap, why is it that we need the discriminant to be less than zero? Because we don't want this graph to be cutting the x-axis. So when I let this be equal to zero, I don't want any solution. Since I don't want any solution to this, I don't want any real solutions to this, so the discriminant of this must be less than zero. So the discriminant is less than zero tells me that we have a b squared, b is five, so 5 squared minus 4a, c, c, this must be less than 0. So we have a, here we have a 5 squared minus 4a squared is less than 0. Again, this is a quadratic inequality. We are going to make use of what we have learned in the chapter on quadratic inequalities to solve for this. And to do that, I was saying in the quadratic uh, inequalities chapter that I have a preference. So I'm going to stick to my preference. I'm going to bring everything over to the other side of the inequality so that I can make sure that the, the coefficient of a square is positive. So we have uh, this square minus 5 square is bigger than 0. I can see this as 2a square minus 5 square. This is bigger than 0. This makes it possible for me to factorize this as a square minus b square is like a minus b, a plus b. So we have uh, this factorized and this. So we have the factorized form and now we can draw the graph that represents this y is equal to this. And on this graph, it is with respect to the a axis since this is the variable that I'm talking about now. And the roots will be minus 5 over 2 and here it's going to be 5 over 2 and the y coordinate here represents this entire thing so we want to look at the range of values of a such that the y coordinate is bigger than 0 this was what we discussed in the topic on quadratic inequalities so this is the values of a such that the y coordinates are bigger than 0 therefore from here we can see that a must be less than minus 5 over 2 or a must be bigger than 5 over 2. But let's not forget that a must also be bigger than 0 at the same time. So we cannot possibly accept a to be less than minus 5 over 2 since we need to make sure that a is bigger than 0. Therefore, the final answer is just this. Therefore, a is supposed to be bigger than 5 over 2. And this helps me to complete my discussion with you on the quadratic functions and quadratic, inequality, uh, and quadratic equations. And if you get this, I'll see you in the next chapter. We're going to be discussing more about our AMF.